So right here beside me is a laptop that I picked up for 50 Australian dollars. A little bit of a backstory behind this laptop. I've been meaning to do this video for a while as well, but I got this when I traded it for a monitor that I picked up for $50. It was a 27 inch uh, 1080p monitor. And this computer came around when the people were buying a computer that I was selling and they just said this laptop was broken. They said they didn't want it anymore. Uh, is it fixable? And I said, look, I don't know what's wrong with it. I can uh, give you this monitor in exchange. And they said, sure. And then I took a look at it and it was actually one of the hard drives. So it had an SSD in it, which was quite small, but it also had a hard drive and that was giving it problems. It was broken to the point where it wasn't even recognized and that was causing it not to boot. And upon removing the drive, everything else worked smoothly. So it still had a copy of Windows on it too. And then I was looking for a drive, and this is actually one of the excuses why this video took so long to make. I was looking for a cheap budget drive to put in. So a 2.5 inch SATA, one came up on Gumtree, except someone else snapped it up by the time I called them. So then I went on eBay when they had a sale and I picked up a 7200 RPM drive. This is a 500 gigabyte drive. So in my opinion, this drive is gonna be perfect for this laptop as the 500 gigabytes that it needs to store games and also do everything else. And when I go to sell it, I can say, hey, it's got half a gig of storage as well. But today we're gonna to be putting this drive in and then we're gonna be putting the games on, especially Fortnite, because I wanna see if Fortnite will run on this laptop since it's very popular at the moment. And we'll also put another couple of uh, popular multiplayer titles on and see if it can run. But with that aside, let's get this drive into the laptop and then check out what the specs are. So we just booted up the laptop now, absolutely no problems and it booted up lightning fast by the way. And it's also got a GTX 765M installed for the graphics. And then for the CPU, you've got an i5-4210M as well. So first things first, we're gonna run Cinebench and Firestrike, get some scores, Cinebench being for the CPU, Firestrike being for the GPU. And then we're gonna do some temperature tests with the Heaven benchmark for the GPU and then Ida64 for the CPU. And then after all those stress tests are done, we can get the games installed and see how this thing uh, plays, providing it doesn't overheat in the stress tests. So let's get that done. So we just finished the Cinebench run now and it scored 300 on the dot. So not too impressive. I mean, it's actually really slow in my opinion, but uh, this is a mobile solution and mobile solutions, of course, they run slower than the desktop variants, especially in clock speeds. You can see that 2.6 gigahertz right there. And interestingly enough, the old Core 2 quad that we had in the CSGO Potato number two that scored around 324, I believe, if I remember correctly. So the old Core 2 quads, they can still get up and boogie, especially compared to things like this, uh, which is a Haswell-based uh, mobile variant. But let's run that Firestrike score and see how the graphics solution holds up. So now the GPU and CPU scores are actually pretty bad. I was expecting a little bit more on both fronts, um, but I guess really that's what you expect out of mobile solutions, especially in this era. I mean, recently there's been this big push with the GTX 10 series cards and the Max-Q thing, but um, this era, you know, they really were nerfed compared to their desktop variants. So um, I'm going to check the temperatures now just to make sure things aren't throttling, especially on the CPU side of things, as in the physics test, there was a big stutter. So that is usually indicating a throttle on the CPU. So let's check out this Ida64 CPU stress test first. So now I feel like the biggest idiot because I pulled up this Ida64 stress test and then I went to statistics here and it's only got two cores and then I remembered exactly what the i5s in this generation were all about. They're actually dual cores with hyper-threading. So what you've actually got here is uh, the desktop variant of an i3 pretty much in a mobile. So the naming scheme was kind of weird uh, with the mobile solutions and how they did that. And the desktop variant, of course, the i5, it's gonna have four cores, four threads. So it's gonna be a lot more powerful uh, than this two cores and four threads. And of course, those lower clock speeds. So it's going up to 2.8 gigahertz on those two cores, four threads. Uh, but that would explain the low physics scores and of course the low Cinebench scores. Uh, as the temperatures here are absolutely fine. They're around hovering in, I think it is uh, low 70s or mid 70s. And that's after about five minutes. So that's absolutely fine. This thing's gonna run okay in games, but I'm still a bit confused as to why that physics score had that drop 
uh, as soon as it was booting up, it was going okay. And then it had a dip to like two or three FPS. So a bit confused about that. I mean, let's see if this exhibits this behavior in games. Uh, but we will run the Heaven benchmark first, just to check the GPU temperatures and make sure they're okay as well. So now we're running the Unigine Heaven benchmark, and this benchmark is really good because it can tell you a lot of things. And in the case of the laptop, it actually is a really good benchmark since the GPU and CPU in this case are definitely sharing those heat pipes and fans. And so originally I wanted to overclock um, both of these components, but after seeing this benchmark, I'm actually not going to because if I overclock the CPU and the GPU even just 10%, it could actually overload that cooling system. As you see here, it's already hitting around 80 degrees. Uh, even on the CPU side, that's only hovering between 20 to 40%. So imagine in a CPU intensive game if that was going to 100%, this thing could uh, indeed in, uh, maybe hit some thermal throttling. So really not a good uh, thing to do on laptops in general, and that's overclocking unless you've got a beast cooling solution on it. Uh, and the ambient temperatures are about 27 degrees in here at the moment too. So another thing as well is I put it on low settings at 1080p because I want to get a benchmark of this versus the CSGO Potato. Now, it did have a GTX 275 in it, and it only had 896 megabytes of dedicated VRAM. This, I believe, has two gigabytes of dedicated VRAM. So it does have more VRAM, but I do want to check that score out and just compare it directly against the CSGO Potato since Heaven is a um, generally a GPU intensive benchmark. And we can already see the score there, 2,233. I thought the CSGO Potato scored um, around the 1500. So this GPU is about 50% more powerful. Uh, and so with that extra frame buffer as well, it should be able to play Fortnite and uh, PUBG a lot better than the CSGO Potato number two did. So this will be an awesome to see these results in these two games now, since they are sort of very modern and they are more of the two more demanding uh, popular multiplayer titles out there as well. So if they can play those two games, generally they'll play CSGO and Dota 2 with ease. But of course, Let's get on with those games. So the first of the games here is Fortnite, and even with the recommended graphical settings, uh, which I find are generally a little bit too aggressive, it's getting around 40 to 50 FPS. But tuning this thing down to low settings at 768p, this is the native resolution of the monitor, we're getting incredible frame rates. This is really smooth. You can see it going over 100 FPS a lot of the times. This is actually a really good experience on this little laptop. Now let's move over to PUBG though. Now we're in PUBG and it is running a lot worse than uh, Fortnite was. So this is at the same resolution as well with the lowest settings. So very low settings, 768p I think it is. And you can just see here it's uh, sub 30 FPS. This is out in the open. Um, goes anywhere from this FPS uh, up to 50, mid 50s inside buildings. So this is a pretty bad experience. I mean the CPU and the GPU are pegged. Well, the GPU is pegged at 100%. The CPU's actually got a little bit of room to spare. So what we might do is uh, drop the resolution down and see if we can fix this FPS up. Uh, but it might need to come down considerably, I'd say, because uh, the VRAM's not a problem. It's 1.4 gigs, so it's still got an extra 600 megabytes in the tank. Um, so what we're gonna do is uh, drop the resolution down because the uh, GPU processor itself is getting overwhelmed. So we got a bit of an FPS boost just by doing that um, from 24 now to 34, but the lowest resolution you can put this game in is 720p. So it's not that far off the actual uh, resolution of this monitor. And then we dropped the screen scale down to 70. So we did give it, this is the best uh, this game can run on this laptop essentially. So uh, let's just run around and see if we can um, get wrecked. So 
So there we have it, the $70 laptop, because I had to put a $20 hard drive in it. If you're looking at USD terms, you'd be looking around 55 USD. That's what I paid for this laptop. Now keep in mind as well, you're generally not gonna get a laptop this cheap. And this is one thing that I recommend on the channel. If you guys can find a PC that people think the whole thing's broken, but really it's only one component, then you're going to get a really good bargain. A lot of the bargains in the past that I've got on the channel have been just that, the uh, best bargains that I've got. Right beside me is the uh, CSGO Potato number two. I'll put the link in the description below for that if you want to see it, but it's got, um, it's a PC that we built just off a lot of junk parts and we got this for around 32 USD. So it is coming in a lot cheaper than this in uh, percentage terms. But what surprised me was this beat the laptop in the Cinebench scores. It got 324 Cinebench, I think. This got 300, yet in games, this laptop absolutely hammered this uh, CSGO Potato number two. So what I would put that down to mainly was probably the memory configuration. This only had like five gigabytes of real offset memory and I don't even think that's running in dual channel because it had one gigabyte and then a three, a two gigabyte stick. And I don't believe that'll run in dual channel or run in single channel. Um, but keep in mind, we did need that extra memory to run those games. So we kind of had to do the five gigabyte <laughs> offset configuration. This on the other hand had eight gigabytes in dual channel configuration. So was running a lot better in terms of ground up specs and uh, tuning, but it also had a better graphics solution installed, the GTX 765M, and this had a two gigabyte dedicated VRAM buffer. This only had 896 megabytes. So that difference did play a role in Fortnite, especially. Uh, Dota 2 was okay, both of these games played Dota 2 okay. And with Dota 2, the interesting thing was I really dislike playing on a small screen. I think if you're playing Dota 2, 24 inches I think is a sweet spot, 27 is pretty good. Uh, but playing on small screens is just really hard. I found that out firsthand with this laptop, so that was a pretty cool thing. Uh, PUBG, I didn't even bother running PUBG on this, and I know it definitely won't run on this after trying to run it on this. Uh, we did get a playable experience. It was around about, I'd say 40 to 50 FPS average, but keep in mind we did have it on the lowest setting, 720p, which is lower than the 768p on the laptop's monitor, and we still had to lower the screen scale. So it was the absolute minimum settings you can lock in for the game, and it just ran it, it was okay. So, end of the day, this laptop does beat the CSGO Potato 2 by a long shot, because it does have a screen, and it is a smaller package. But what it comes down to at the end of the day is getting those deals, finding those bargains, and this was an absolute bargain. Keep in mind, the problem could have been uh, a lot worse than it was. It was probably the easiest fix, but at the end of the day, the people who got rid of it thought that it was a pretty bad problem. It wouldn't boot at all. So taking a look at it, we took the hard drive out, swapped it around, and it booted perfectly. Now keep in mind, I may have had to change the thermal paste, but when I checked the thermals, they're absolutely fine for a laptop. Had no overclocking headroom as well, which is typical of just a run-of-the-mill laptop. And that's about it, really. This is the bargain here. This one here is just a junk parts built PC, but of course the one that's considered broken and doesn't work is always gonna be a cheaper bargain for to be had. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed this video on the uh, yeah, $70 laptop. And if you did, then be sure to hit that like button. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of both these PCs. And I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye. at how well it ran in games, especially Fortnite 2 and, uh, Fortnite 2. <laughs> there is no Fortnite 2 yet. Probably will be in the future though.